Live, love, Africa. What's your excuse for not coming? Please subscribe. Hello, I'm Guinness the Mirror. <laughs>
uh, past previously the North uh, British North American colonies. It has it 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 it, it, it it's, it's arguably referred to as one of the most significant sites for African Americans or Africans uh, uh, Americans outside of the United States. For Bons Island. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because Bons Island is 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 one of the only slave forts that an intact community outside of the continent of Africa, which is the Gola Geechee. Sorry, sorry, say that part again about the Bunch Island and the Gola, Gola Geechee people. Okay, so um, Bones Island has a, a strategic or a unique importance uh -huh. to the uh, Amer African Americans, especially with the Gola Geechee people. Uh -huh. Okay, so um, like I said, it, it played a very important role, not just only in the economic, political and military development of the United States, right. but arguably it could be referred to as the most the most important sites uh -huh. for African Americans outside of the United States. Right. That is an intact community like the Gola Gichi people can point out on the continent of Africa that that is a place that our, our, our ancestors were shipped from. Uh -huh. So that's that, that that's very important. So 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 it's, it it gives it decides a an outstanding universal value. Uh -huh. So these are just few of the things that you 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 you, you get on Bones Island, and with the with, with the operations on Bones Island, I have set different different type of operations because in the earlier period you have the the the, the Crown Charter companies because you remember when uh, Britain was uh, fighting for or gain, trying to gain hegemony on the uh, and, 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 and in Africa, they started. They gave, they gave, they gave most of the merchants, the the, the, the the English merchants, crown charters to come into Africa and then set up uh, forts like you have slave forts now mm. to set up forts and then to facilitate trade. That also they did in slavery. So Bones Island is one of those forts. Today, um, historically, some of these sites are referred to as warehouses of humanities. Okay, warehouses of humanity. It's not like today you have your warehouse to pack your cements or your rice, right. but this we are warehouse that humans were packed right. before. Uh. Yes, before they were uh, taken and then humanity. yes, uh. Uh, warehouse of humanity. So it, they, they were placed in inhuman conditions and uh. then uh, branded, did a lot of painful things to them before they were taken through the middle passage. Today, today, to, to, today we say we, we, we still cannot get uh, a complete number of how many of uh, African African king folks in that period that died within the Middle Passage. Right. Okay, so you say you say you say from a historical perspective that um, the Middle Passage is millions, millions, yes. millions, darling. millions. Uh, yeah, so the, the 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 Middle Passage can be referred to as one of the greatest of burial grounds of enslaved Africans that were, that were going through the Middle Passage to go into the New World. So, so this is this is one of the sites you are going to see today and, and, and in, in Bodoloko district. And it is it is one of Sierra Leone's first national heritage assets. It was proclaimed a national monument in 1948. Is it on UNESCO yet or no? Yes, it is, it, 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 is on, it is on a UNESCO tentative list 2012 to okay. qualify also because what's the process for, for world heritage sites, you need to go first on the tentative list. Okay. That is like a process. So once you are on the tentative list, you have to put up a lot of papers together and then to see how the World Heritage Convention or the World Heritage Committee can assess that and then make it a world heritage site okay. but in 2012 it is one of the cultural sites in Sierra Leone uh, included with uh, Fobe College which uh, old Fobe College building which is the first uni western kind of university in sub-saharan Africa established in 1827 in Sierra Leone so that's that that gives the Monica of Sierra Leone as the antenna of West Africa that is because most of the people today you see in Nigeria, Sierra Leone was the headquarters for British West Africa. Right. Yeah, so most of the civil servants, uh, great Pan-Africanists studied at Frobe College. Okay. 
So, so, so that is why they refer to it as the Athens of West Africa. People came from different parts, like because when Timbuktu col uh, collapsed, right. Bonds I uh, uh, Phobe College was the alternative. Oh, okay. Yes, okay, okay. <laughs> Phobe College was the alternative after the collapse of Timbuktu. So you have great people coming in and giving giving it that kind of semblance of internet intellectual and international space for education. So that is that 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 that, 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 that is part of it. So today you are going to see Bones Island and this this place has been uninhabited since the Right. If you could tell everybody where we're at right now. Okay, we're at Frabe College and it's one of the oldest universities in, 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 in West Africa. In West Africa. In fact, I want to say <laughs> this is the oldest yeah. university in West Africa. Yeah. Outside of Timbuktu. For some reason, they really don't count Timbuktu as the oldest, but we're at the oldest university in West Africa and it's in Freetown, Sierra Leone. What's the name again, brother? Forbe College. Forbe. <laughs> Forbe? Yeah, Forbe. Forbe College. The oldest university college in West Africa. So four-way college, like I said, is the oldest university in West Africa, right here, University of Sierra Leone, Freetown. This is uh, by the Creoles? Sierra Leone, call it Eastern Lions. Uh, yeah. Are they good? Yeah, yeah, Eastern Lions, the big thing. Like the, the Liverpool. Like Liverpool? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yes, boss. Yeah, now left one, left one. So, now I'm going to Now, what's, do you know him? Um, I think he's a medical practitioner. Okay. He's known, or he's known as a doctor of the poor because he made man to man to man. Also, uh, I think Dr. Like, Dogen, when he joins, uh -huh. he's a physician and a surgeon during the colony. I'm fine, how are you? I don't really the caretaker. Huh? You're the caretaker? Okay. Is he the caretaker? <laughs> oh, okay. Alright, so this is Regent Road Baptist Church. Uh, we're in Freetown, Sierra Leone. This is the oldest Baptist church on the African continent. Founded by a black American by the name of David George in 1792. So, this is the history. brought to the new colony. Among the 1,200 new slaves, I'm sorry, start all over. Among the 1,200 free, free slaves brought to the new colony, now known as Freetown, Sierra Leone, in 1792, were Baptists. Methodists and members of the, the Count, Countess of Huntingdon Connection beginning in Nova Scotia, Canada, after a tiring 
and distressing three month voyage these people gathered around the cotton tree for a Thanksgiving service. The Baptists in the group were accompanied by their pastor, the Reverend David George himself, a free slave, a Virginia born Baptist preacher. He soon constituted his people into a Baptist church. The fruit of his accomplishment remains today. During the 220th church anniversary of the Regent Road Baptist Church, this church avails this memorial plaque in celebration of the historical moment in Baptist history. The memorial plaque characterizes a sense of partnership in the gospel of Jesus Christ and is the fruit of much generosity provided from the Alfred Street Baptist Church, Alexandria, Virginia, and from the Regent Road Baptist Church, Freetown, Sierra Leone. There's the history, you guys. There's the history. They, 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 they tried to, they, they, they wanted to try, they, they, the British or the, the, the Europeans at the time wanted to start doing some other businesses there but it did not do well. Right. So after that, they just left it like that. So only when the Monumental Health Commission has established through an ordinance and then you had the first uh, uh, chairman of the commission came down to the place after reading about it and then they, they, they did the first like brushing of it and then it was declared a national monument and then it it, it it came under the remains of the Monuments and Relics Commission which is the Alien Heritage Conservation Agency by law so it's it's intact most you see most of the ruins inside because it's it's not like you other other slave forts that are built in and build up areas or an environment where you have other people so in Bones Island we only have security they come work in the morning and then they go and then they exchange the other security. So okay. it's an uninhabited place. Nobody stays there okay. unless you, you, you like you're going to get a tour. You go you, you go there and then after that you don't have people living there unless workers are come work okay. the day and the night. So so it gives it gives you the authenticity of the site up to date that it has not been tampered with yeah. from either human human activities. Yes. So. So that's that's that, that's that, that's one of an authentic sites in the west on the west coast of Africa, especially that speaks to not just only the transatlantic slave trade, but the intersection of Africa, Europe, and the greater or the wider Atlantic world. So it's it's very important that you are coming to see this historic site today. So that's just a brief introduction of okay. what what you be going to see on the island. When the, uh, my, I'm so sorry, please forgive me. So, where, okay, explain what you're explaining as far as when the first point of, I guess, acceptance or the first point that the, in, you know, in Freetown where the slaves first were, or free slaves, I'm sorry, were first dropped off at when they arrived to Sierra Leone. Okay, today, even before you had the slave, the, the, the uh, it's a pre Atlantic, okay, uh -huh. pre Atlantic world. There is a, a, a notable place in Freetown uh -huh. that is that was known as the watering place. Okay. And that was that, that that was a place where ships could come and then land. Right. Uh, great, uh, they, they, they don't have any problem. Like Jim Barbot referred to it as one of the safest of landing place on the West Guinea coast. Uh -huh. Okay. So, and whenever merchants came in, this is one of the places they had supplies right. because they had a, a fresh spring coming from that place so they will get they will fill their barrels and then continue their journey right okay so when you had the atlantic wall now you had the slave trade and stuff and when portuguese started coming to that place as early as in the 1500s uh -huh. that place so it was also not just only uh a disembarkation point uh -huh. for 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 africans to go into slavery but it was also an abolition point or a place of welcome or a place of freedom uh -huh. because when they came back some of them passed through that location again okay. so when this slave trade was abolished you have different groups coming into freetown as free slaves 
okay so one of the last groups that came into freetown was the recaptives okay. or liberated africans okay. these were a set of africans that did not go across the atlantic uh -huh. into slavery they were not enslaved outside of the atlantic right. so when uh, uh you had the west african squadrons on the high seas to enforce the abolition act what any slave merchants they hold with the uh, slaves that they want to take out of uh -huh. Sierra Leone or out of Africa, they will take you and then come with you down to Sierra Leone because uh -huh. it was one of the places known as Free Town right. because everybody that is there was free, not a slave any longer. Uh -huh. So once these slaves come in either from Nigeria up to down from Congo, uh -huh. once they, 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 they take them, they will come with them. So you have people talking different, different ethnic groups. Whether you, you are Igba, Ohubo, uh, Yoruba, uh, 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 different Hausa, all of all of these groups. So once they they came in, they were processed through an asylum. There is a place known as the King's Yard Gate. That gate is a national monument. It is also a cultural site on a tentative list for UNESCO for Sierra Leone. So once these liberated Africans pass through that gate, they are deemed as free people. And they will change their names, you understand? Give them English names, then they will give them English clothing. And most of these people were not used to English clothing. So when they gave them uh, English clothing, they will remove them. And because most of them were even entering the, 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 the colony at the time of Freetown at the time, because it was not bad in, 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 in the late in the late period after 1790s, when they when they came in. They were not even coming with clothes in, 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 into Freetown. So what 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 the, what the British were doing in that period was to give them cutting cloth. No, you know that's 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 indigenous thing. So just to cover themselves and because they're used to that, they, they don't take that off because they used to even wear in coughing cutting cloth in, in in the villages where they came from or the communities where they came from because cutting cloth was used as a symbol of pride or a symbol of wealth. The cloth itself. So that is what they will give them, and then later they start <coughs> cajoling them to wear the English cloth it's within within free time. So King Jimmy, the watering place is mm -hmm. is is one point of entry. Okay. Once you you are posted through that asylum, which is now the hospital where you have the eye clinic through that gate, you are free. You are taken to a liberated African department because they have like a department to register liberated Africans that came into free town. And then once they get your names, they started giving them plots outside of the central district, which, which oh, are, right. yes, yeah, they oh, started wow. giving them places to go and, and, and live. That is what they call liberated African villages now. So how, how, did, how, did, how did Sierra Leone become a British colony? Yes, in, in after, like you said, you had a, an abolition of slave trade, especially it's in the British Empire, right. you know, Different, different European nations are fighting for hegemony, for global hegemony. Right. So that's why you had empires, right? right? So under the British Empire, you have uh, the crown controlling large vast of land. Under the British Empire, you have the crown controlling large vast of lands. Okay, and in, in the African continent. So that is why they had crown charters. Even even the merchants that came to to operate uh, Bonds Island. They were given crown chartered, so that is that they worked for the crown in terms of uh, taking slaves from here and then taking them because you had British, British, not American colonies. You know, uh, Britain was the one that uh, colonized uh, uh, United States in North America at the time. So you had uh, British, not American colonies. Okay, so with that, they were most of the things they were experimenting. They were using Africans. Okay, they were using Africans, like you say for 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 bonsai, like you talk about growing of rice. Right. Okay, growing of rice was not a thing done by uh, the British in in, in, in England because right. even their weather cannot allow for you to grow rice. Okay, so what they did was to use those North American colonies, South Carolina, Georgia, where you where you have land that is synonymous to like Sierra Leone, oh. where you can plant rice. You go up so yeah. that's where you can plant rice. So they came down here took Africans and then went to work in the plantation so like a theater they work there get the rice and then bring it down to England right. for them to so so that's that was like that, that, that was like the triangle understand? that's like triangle of support also right. for, the, for, for, for for their own activities so with the abolition of slave 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 trade 
Frosty, we, we, Frosty, we, Frosty. When was the slave trade ab uh, uh, abolished by the British? Yeah. In and in 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 1807 there was an act, but it did not. You did not have a total abolition of slavery in the British Empire up to like 1833. Uh -huh. So 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 it goes beyond even the 1807. You understand? So they were still doing some little little business in terms of taking Africans out of uh, Af uh, Africa to go to work in different part of the world which they had as colonies okay so and when 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 they when when they had that in 18 in 1787 you had the first set of free slaves emptied into free town they referred to them as the black poor where did they come from 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 these these were slaves they were taken to different part of the world right where are you were from america uh, those that went to those after the American oh, uh, no, no, uh, no, no, Revolutionary yeah, War. Okay, okay. Yes. Explain, explain, yeah, explain yes. that. You had the black loyalists, you understand? Uh -huh. Because during the American uh, Revolution, there were slaves, there were slaves that fought on the side of the British. Right. And these were promised, you go straight so these were promised freedom after Briti Bri Britain wins the war with America. Right. So and so they fought on, on their side and these soldiers we are referred to as black loyalists right. for the for, for the British. That is the force on the side of the British. But at the end of the day, they did not win the the the, 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 the battle. Okay, right. America had the independence. Okay, with right. support from France and other place, uh, and other countries. So they had independence. So they were promised land in Nova Scotia. Right. Yeah, that we were going to give you a beautiful land that you can still go do the kind of work you were doing. Okay, whatever plantation you want to do. Yeah, and so good. yeah, yeah it's no and, good. The and the place is icy. It's ice, and so, yeah. so so and. Most of these black loyalists well, who were slaves taken from different parts of Africa, Sierra Leone, that went to that place, fought on the side, and then they were emptied in Nova Scotia. So they had problem with the place. All right. so, the, so the Africans started revolting in Nova Scotia and they started writing petitions, okay, to the British government in England. So there was a time even they had a leader, Thomas Peters, had to travel, okay, had to travel at, uh, to, to, to England and then beg few abolitionists or humanitarians, right. philanthropists at the time, to see that how they can help them and then uh, leave that place. Right. So with support from other 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 people like Granville Sharp, William Wilberforce, so they had to uh, get some amount of money and then find a place for them and which is Freetown. Right. So the for the, 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 this is now the people, the Nova Scotians we are the ones that founded the name Freetown okay. in 1792. Okay? Because before 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 1792 the first set of slaves that came in 1787, the place was referred to as Granville Town because it was in memory of Granville Sharp, one of the legal luminaries that was fighting so against the British. So my question is, where did the first the? Oh no. So my question is, where did the Nova Scotia or the Black Loyalists? Where was their first point of entry when they came to Freetown? That's the place, watering place I was telling you about the okay. King Jimmy. Okay? King Jimmy. Okay. So they came and then. Uh, negotiated for 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 land to the to the indigenous people at the time who were the Timini because the place was not free time, it was referred to as Roma Rong. Uh -huh. That was the local name. You understand? Right. Roma Ro, 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 Roma Rong was the local name. So when they found the, uh, they gave them, they had to brush stretch east. From that point, east like will lead you to the cotton tree. There is a cotton tree in Central Town. So if you move if you move like eastward or ten uh, some miles eastward, you get a cotton tree. So um. These people had to brush that land and then and under a country tree they had to converge and then start singing hymns of freedom okay uh -huh. that we are now free we are independent and that is why they call the place free town okay so the nova scotians gave that name but before before then there we are uh, slaves that were free that came the first set of slaves we are uh, uh the black the black poles because when when they when, when that emancipation like an, like an emancipation thing was proclaimed mm -hmm. in England that anybody that enters British territory which is England now or London you are a free man right. so the africans had that the, the, the slaves so the, the, the enslaved ones so people coming from the caribbean coming from nova scotia they all all of them we are running now into london okay so and you have a large group of Africans coming into London and then they started becoming burden for the white people. Right. So it's like, okay, these guys are, uh, they are, they are now white man's burden. Right. Let, let, let's find a way, you understand, how we can just keep them off because most of them were struggling in the cool in London. Oh, yeah. Most of them were dying, you understand. So they just uh, look at the way and say, let's just 
we leave ourselves of this burden and then finally and at the time you know you go good on that yeah and at, and, and, and at the time they were still uh you had people or the british people that i worked in sierra leone ali sierra leone like one is henry smith's man he was an entomologist henry smith's man was an entomologist so when even when even the abolitionists were fighting for a place to empty the the the, 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 the free sleeves he gave a recommendation because he came down here to study insects right. and then he, he fell in love with the land mm -hmm. okay because he was working in bananas and then he fell in love with the land so when these discussions were coming up in the parliament and all, at other abolitionist circles he gave a recommendation that there is a place in west africa a very beautiful beautiful place and humans can live there with no problem right. so with that recommendation and he was uh, an entomologist uh, a scientist doing some work for the for 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 for, 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 the, for the british people out there in sierra leone and then they heeded and that was when you had the first set of free slaves coming in in 1787 and when they came because of one of their leaders that was thinking that sierra leone can be used as an African free experiment right. that Africans can be free and lead their own domain so and since few of these guys like the ones that founded Freetown or one of the leaders that went to the petition Thomas Peters he had this this orientation that now we are free and we are independent to rule ourselves in our own land which is Africa okay and then to 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 to, to Thomas Peters dismay or his orientation he had before then when they came, the the, 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 the the captain, the captain that came with the ship mm -hmm. became who was a white man became the first governor. You understand? Know, became the first governor of Freetown or Sierra Leone at the time, which is John Clarkson was the captain that came with the boat. Okay. So Peters became very disgruntled. So they had to like get a rebellion. What people? Yeah, the, 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 the Nova Scotians. Uh -huh. They had to get a rebellion because since that at the time they are, uh, it was not a Col uh, a colony at the time. It was operated as a company. Sierra Leone was operated as a yeah, company. Yeah, yeah, okay. Sierra Leone was operated as a company before 1808. Uh -huh. So when uh, Peter realized that, okay, we were coming into Africa and we are to rule our own people in Africa, which is part of like black independence. Now you, the uh, the white man, is becoming a governor over us so they had this this scrabble and since this was a company there people were coming with other taxes for them to pay la quit rent and stuff so all of this agitated the nova scotia and said how are we coming back to africa which is a, a, our own free space and then people are asking us to pay tax right. in our own motherland you understand mm -hmm. where our ancestors we are taken from or we are some of us even we are taken from and returning and returning so they had a nova scotian rebellion in 1800 okay and that was that that, that 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 was the time also that the maroons the maroons entered into freetown as a set of freed slaves who's the maroons the maroons the, Mar the, Mar the maroons were from african jamaica. yes the maroons from, from, jamaica. from jamaica yes they came to yeah being oh. from jamaica they were shipped to nova scotia mm -hmm. you understand so after they were shipped to nova scotia they became this going to like this like, 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 like this group they had to come down to 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 sierra leone so they said that we will not live in nova scotia let's just find a better option for us that will give us independence so they came they came down to to sierra leone so in 1800 and you know how hostile the maroons are yeah, because that's why they call them the, the, the spanish name is cimarron cimarron means hostile people right. or people that that, 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 that that just live hostile lives in the mountains right. so that if you go to jamaica most of the places that you have the maroons are in the mountains like you have the coromantes mm -hmm. and these are people that are, like most of them have ashanti ancestry okay. from ghana okay. you understand so so the the, the the maroons came in 1800 and the maroons were used by the british to quell that uh, revolution at the time so that also gave a, a, a strained relationship between the nova scotians that came and the maroons mm -hmm. because they are saying that okay how can these guys use you to quell uh, a, a, a fight we are fighting against for 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 for, for our independence so this was this this, this was part of the set of groups that came in you have the the black poles you have the, the the nova scotians you had the maroons and then the last group being the recaptives who are liberated africans for the black poles the black poles were the first ones that who say when they said that we want to relieve ourselves for the white man burden in england when all of these black guys 
heard about this freedom, the, the Lord Mansfield proclamation of um, uh, Britain will not be used as a place to, to sell slaves, most of them came to London. And when they came to London, the population was too big for London, especially for blacks, and most of them were living, they were living in squalor in the streets of uh, London, so they had to find an alternative for them, and Sierra Leone became one of that alternative in Africa for free people. Wow. All right, so we're here, we're about to catch um, our yachts to uh, to boats. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We're about to catch our yacht. It's, it's a yacht. It's a yacht. So we're about to catch our yacht to Bunch Island. So I'm uh, about to get up out the car and go hop on our yacht. Mm -hmm. 